Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, selection of uh, electronic health and medical records. And we re really want to help you take your uh, process from uh, confusion to confidence. You, you may be aware that, um, in the U.S. at least, that there is actual benefits to um, uh, having an electronic medical record system. Uh, the government right now is providing uh, up to $44,000 next year to help subsidize the implementation of electronic medical records. That's actually going to go down uh, the longer you wait to prove meaningful use. Uh, th those benefits are going to actually erode and um, the carrot will be gone and then the government will get a stick out. And uh, starting in 2015, there may be a penalty for not having an electronic medical record system. So you all have the presentations on your iPad and uh, we're going to just move through this. Uh, page two. What we're going to provide today is a um, really a roadmap, just a, a top-level view of planning and executing a successful EHR EMR selection project. And uh, also, I want to just give you a brief introduction to a, uh, a product to help get you there. Uh, this isn't meant to be an all-inclusive list, but uh, should help uh, you become familiar with what's involved with selecting an electronic medical record system. Going to the next page. Healthcare IT News just last year in November uh, stated that about 50% failure rate for electronic medical record implementations. And really most of those failures uh, resulted uh, from poor planning and preparation. And this really uh, reinforces that old adage that says failure to plan and you plan to fail. So planning is a huge part of the uh, selection process. Going on to the next slide, an overview of the selection process. I'm going to go through five separate topics. Preparing and planning for your electronic medical records. Uh, organizing uh, people in your staff. How to basically pull the technology and workflow assessment together. Let's talk about capital investment. What are the benefits, the return on investment with respect to um, implementing an EHR? And then finally, you're going to have to select something, and there is a process for helping with that as well. So those will be the, uh, the topics that we'll run through rather briefly here this afternoon. Okay, again, pr failure to pr prepare and plan is a major obstacle. And a lot of practices underestimate the complexity involved and the time required to undergo the full transition to EHR. Um, and this is what we will talk about. Organizations and people, moving on to the next slide. Do you have a physician leader? You know, every, this is a project. This is a major implementation project, and every project requires a champion. And uh, we recommend that somebody in the practice, a physician, uh, actually become that champion for this particular project. Now, you may also want to select a project manager, somebody that may be a little bit more organized, a little bit more detail-oriented to actually follow this project through from start to finish. You'll have to select a project team, uh, make sure all the key stakeholders are on board, uh, you know, not only your champion, your project manager and the project team, but there's also going to have to be a requirement to um, you know, have the other stakeholders in the practice involved and engaged as well. Um, your staff, having them appreciate what's going to be coming down the pike. Uh, you could try surveying and then also trying to provide some level of uh, understanding of what the project timeline is going to look like. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Technology and workflow assessment. This is probably the most complicated piece of the entire EHR uh, selection process. And there are a large number of questions that you're going to have to follow through in order to make this successful. Uh, should you keep your current practice management system? Uh, I know well over 90% uh, of you have an electronic practice management system in place that helps you with the billing and the scheduling. Um, but how are you going to integrate that into your electronic health record system? Uh, what are some typical impl implementation options that might be available to you? Uh, for instance, are you going to do this all at once, or maybe you want to phase in, um, you know, record, uh, you know, record in inputs at first, and then maybe um, e-prescribing notes, and you can phase in various aspects of an EHR, or you can just go ahead, uh, jump in the water all at once, and um, implement the whole thing from start to finish. Uh, how are you going to enter your data? Physicians, your RNs, your nurse practitioners, your PAs, you need to think about how that data entry process is going to go. 
Um, another important uh, aspect is uh, what are you going to do uh, with your um, electronic uh, or your paper records, for instance? Have you thought about how you're going to transition all the paper that you have in your practice into your EHR? How are you going to manage prescriptions? Are you going to use the embedded e-prescribe that's going to be coming and available with a lot of the uh, EHR systems? Billing and coding decisions. How are you going to replace the super bill? Um, one of the interesting things is uh, EHR uh, systems will typically uh, provide for fewer mistakes when it comes to filling out the super bill and getting the, uh, the information into your records and therefore, you actually end up uh, not making as many mistakes and uh, ac re receive a return on your, um, uh, on, on your investment by capturing more uh, billings that you may have already not have captured in the past. There's device connectivity uh, implications. E many of the EHRs uh, are set up and do interface to the new electrical um, and electronic data collection devices that are out there and available. I know my company, Welch Allen, offers a number of vital signs uh, devices and monitors that will actually interface to the EHR and the EMR records uh, that are available to you. Uh, you're going to have to worry about software purchasing and planning. There's going to be a lot of uh, options related to purchasing your software. And then you're also going to have to worry about hardware implementation. Are you going to set up a server? Are you going to put all your data in the cloud? Uh, thin client, thick client, those are all the different kinds of uh, uh, hardware decisions that you'll be faced with. Okay, moving on to the next slide, capital assessments. This is an investment, it's a major capital program. Um, you need to basically uh, make sure you understand where all your expenses uh, are. Um, do you know all of your costs? Uh, this is gonna be a project that's gonna involve time out of office. Um, uh, there's gonna be the cost of planning, preparing, buying, installing your system. And on the other hand, are you aware of all the revenue benefits? Uh, by implementing EHR, EMR systems, there is quite a bit of um, benefit in terms of improved efficiencies and productivity. And ultimately, you're gonna end up uh, with a return on investment calculation. Understanding how long it's gonna take you to get your payback and uh, you know, other things like, is this gonna be an investment? Is this gonna be a capital expense? Am I gonna amortize the cost over time? Um, just one other comment on this. Uh, when you do go to implement your EHR, EMR system, you're going to want to plan on um, a, a time period during the implementation where you're going to have to reduce the load on your practice, maybe to a, essentially half time in terms of your ability to see patients for a uh, two to three week period. Uh, next slide, evaluation and selection. Uh, you know, selecting a provider is not uh, a trivial task. Uh, you'll probably end up creating a short list, maybe three to five providers uh, from over, uh, geez, there's probably at least 500 vendors out there selling EMR, EHR records. Are you prepared to create an RFP? That's a request for proposal. Uh, do you have a standard product demo script? We would recommend that you really come up with a one set of objective criteria against which you will evaluate uh, the EHR systems for which you are considering purchasing. Uh, there may be a reference site that you can go visit, and uh, the question is when you go visit that reference site, do you have a set of criteria to evaluate that site? And lastly, do you have a methodology for determining a final vendor of choice? So again, there's a, a lot of complexity in terms of uh, narrowing down the field, coming up with objective criteria, and then selecting uh, uh, your EHR provider. Uh, next slide, most common mistakes. Just in recap, uh, if you don't plan um, and uh, you don't have a process, that's one of the more common mistakes for selecting an EHR system. Uh, not allowing enough time to manage the project. You know, typically an EHR selection process will run anywhere from three to four months. Uh, calendar time, you may expect to spend you know, one, two days maybe of actual attack time, you know, where you're actually involved in the process of uh, uh, understanding and selecting a EHR system. Uh, 
another mistake is moving ahead without a champion. Uh, again, it really reinforce the uh, benefits of having a physician champion or a physician leader in the selection process. Another mistake might be engaging EHR companies too soon before you've done the planning uh, process. And then uh, lack of an experienced selection expert in the process. You know, having somebody who's done this before always uh, is helpful. Uh, just want to introduce you to a, a pro product that Welch Allen offers. Uh, it's a new and novel approach to EHR preparation and selection. Uh, we, we do realize and recognize the challenges the practices have with respect to selecting a, um, an EHR system. So we actually have a product that is essentially a project management system that will help guide you through the, um, the selection process. Going on to the next slide. It's an optimal mix of uh, an innovative web based project management tool. We do provide uh, expert consulting. There's, you'll be assigned a consultant to help you select the, uh, uh, the EHR system. Uh, it's been proven uh, with respect to uh, its ability to deliver results. Uh, I think I have a, uh, a list here. I think we have over 75 pediatrician practices that have actually utilized this system. Uh, we have over a thousand physician practices that have uh, taken advantage of our EHR Prep Select pro program, and all of them have come back with very favorable results in terms of uh, expediting and, uh, you know, making this process as uh, user friendly as possible. Uh, so this this program, next to the last slide here, is resulting in increased confidence and reduced pre-selection anxiety. This is a uh, very stressful time in a practice in terms of moving over to electronic records. Um, it increases the probability of selecting an appropriate vendor and a successful implementation. Again, if you recall, 50% of, uh, of the practices that try to implement an EHR system fail to meet their objectives. So, you know, having a, a system to plan and uh, prepare is uh, highly recommended. Uh, last slide. Uh, if you're interested in the product that Welch Allen offers for project managing the uh, EHR selection process, uh, you can uh, go to our website, welchallen.com. Uh, we are offering a one-hour uh, free phone consult with one of our consultants, um, or you can uh, feel free to stop by and see me up in the office of the future booth, uh, or you can stop by our booth, number 1143, and I'd be happy to talk to you then.